nature of Gerushin, how, how it happens conceptually, um, and the way to look at that is, I mentioned last time, is to um, compare and also contrast what happens to B'nai, Eitzel B'nai Noach in terms of Ishut, and to see what, it's like sort of doing archaeology, that you find a deeper level or earlier level of, um, of law, and then see what happens, what remains from that today, and how things might have changed, or how the earlier um, strata still impact on what we, on uh, the way things work today. Okay. So first, let's just take a look at the psukim, and then we're gonna then we're gonna look back at um, at Bnei Noach, and then we'll come to uh, based on that how we understand what happens to Israel. Okay. So the psukim of Gerushin are in Prashat Ki Teitze. <coughs> As we talked about last week, right, the grounds for divorce. So the the prescribed way of dissolving the marriage is Tivat Sefer Kritut, right? Katavla Sefer Kritut, quote unquote Sefer Kritut. Vinatan biyada, v'shilcha mi beito. So you have um, two legal actions, k'tivat sefer kritut and netina, and then you have some, you could say, de facto action, right? V'shilcha mi beito. V'yatsa mi beito v'alcha v'aytali shacher, and then um, we have again uh, a repeat. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at the Mishnah. Okay, so the Mishnah says first Mishnah Kiddushin. Aishan ikneit b'shlosha drachim. O b'kesef, kivikonat atzma b'shtei drachim. Ikneit b'kesef b'shtar b'biyah. Okay, and then konat atzma. And this is what's important. Konat atzma beget uvemitat abal. Okay. So the description of how a woman gets divorced is quote the kona et atzma beget. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the Rambam um, in, in the beginning of Gerushin. This is just to give us a background of what's going on, like an overview of all of the halachot of uh, of Gerushin. Okay. It's on the bottom of page two, right? Any shamit garesh, perak al halacha halacha alaf in hilchot gerushin. Any shamit garesh et elo bichtav sheyagiyala vikatav uktav ze hu anikra get. Okay. Vasarad varim hein ikar ha gerushin min ha Torah veelu hein. Okay. Shloi garesh eish elo birtzono. You can't be forced to give a get. As opposed to the way the Muslims do it, right? To so Dibur, right? And it will be a matter of Ktav that is written from Kinyano, that the content of this Sefer Kritut has to convey that he, is, that he divorces her. And it has to be final. Like this, the document has to be written, lishma. Okay, what l'shem? What? That's not our issue right now. V'shaloyem chusar ma'aseh achar k'tivato el tola. That it can't be that he'll write something on an object which still needs finit, which needs some other something else to happen before he can give it to her. Okay? The the example given, if he writes something that's mechubar l'karka, that before he can actually give it to her, he has to sever the connection to the karka, right? So that would be no good, okay? V'she yitnenu la, he has to give it to her, V'she yitnenu la b'fnei eidim, V'she yitnenu la b'torat gerushin, right? You can't give it to her and mislead her in terms of what's happening. V'she, even though we don't require mitzad din Torah, mitzad chem rabbeinu gerushin, we do require her agreement, but mitzad din Torah, we don't require her agreement, but you still need her awareness, okay? V'she yitnenu la b'torat gerushin, 
That's the call directly from him from, uh, from him to her. Okay. Okay, should be get Zman, Everything else is he did very suffering. And then what he does is he goes through the Psukim which we just read, and he derives each of these ten halakot from the Psukim. Okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. Okay. So that's so Gerushin takes place by virtue of the transfer of a document from the husband to the wife, where the document says clearly that it's a severing of the marriage, the, of their relationship. Okay? Now, um, when you, in order to understand Gerushin, you have to go back and understand Kiddushin, because Gerushin, basically, the function of Gerushin is to undo Kiddushin. So what does the giving of the document have to undo? Let's just go back to the Rambam, okay? The Rambam, the beginning of Kichot Ishut, right? This is also in the middle of page two, Kode Matan Torah, so the Rambam had, took the same approach. It's not, I'm taking the approach of the Rambam. Whereas the Rambam is, rather than just start with the halachot, the current halachot of Kiddushin or, or Ishut, he, gives, he starts off with a historical background. So apparently he thinks also the historical background is relevant to, to understand the current legality. Okay? So he says, Kodem Matan Torah, Haya Adam Poge Isha Bashuk, Im Ratsa Hu Vehi Lisa Ota, Machnisa Lo Beto U Boala, Beno Lo Vein Atzmo, Vetielo Le Isha. So before Matan Torah, there was no formal act of acquisition by the man. If they both agree, so basically it was a de facto creation of the marital status by virtue of the fact that they began living together. There's no aidim. means you don't they require any witnesses. Right? And as a consequence of that, she becomes his wife. Once the Torah was given, Okay. So the Kiddush of Matan Torah introduces this concept of a Kinyan, where there's a formal legal action of some sort of acquisition, which we talked about, right? There's some sort of acquisition, which is de jure, it's a legal ritualistic act, Right? And that is a prerequisite for the creation of a marital relationship. Okay, in general, this is understood to be broken down between kiddushin and erusin. That's what we talked about. Okay? Kiddushin, I'm sorry, between kiddushin and isuin. Right? You have the kinyan, and then later, chronologically, today we do it basically together, but later they would do the nisuin. So that's what you have here. So the question is. Um, what was the status? So the Ramah talks about B'nai Noach in contradistinction to Yisrael. So there are these two models of the creation of Yishut. And not, not only in terms of the creation of the Yishut, but perhaps in terms of the content of the Yishut as well. Right? The creation of the Yishut, according to the Rambam, by Ben Noach, is merely, you want to be married? So be married. Right? The way you do it is you jump in. Right? Uh, and that is that creates the relationship. And B'nai Noach, I'm Suvim on um, Gilea Rayot, and she's an Eshet Yish, and Chachot B'nai Noach. As opposed to what happens in Israel. We take a look, um, it's not clear that, um, not everybody agrees with the Rambam. Okay. Um, but we did see, when we talk, in terms of, which, in terms of what happens by B'nai Noach, okay, <laughs> we'll talk about that. But in terms of what happens by us, um, to what extent we view, this is a bit of a review from the beginning of the year, to what extent we view Kiddushin as a Kinyan, um, where there are certain areas where the Halachot of Kinyanin do not apply. First of all, obviously we're not talking about a regular Kinyan, right? We have to say that again, right? You can never say it enough, right? But we're not talking about a regular Kinyan, but something which is analogous to Kinyan. Rachel, you should sit on my left, not on my right. But in any case, uh, <laughs> from this perspective. From this perspective. Oh, it's all good. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Methodological question. Yeah. Very hairy looking at 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 um, Noah as a 
earlier strata of law. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not. It's a little bit surprising to me. Um, I, 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 I think I hear where you're coming from, but I want to. Is that a, is that a you is that something you're doing? Is that something you? That I think the Ramam is doing it. I, I, I guess there's an alternative. You could look at them as prescriptive for non-Jews and not necessarily descriptive of that the halachot b'nei noach are, this is what the Torah is saying that a non-Jew should do. Rather, I mean, here... No, this halachot here, this, this halachot, if you, if you take a look in Hilchot Malachim, right? The Rambam paskins what the halachot of b'nei noach are, not in Hilchot Ishut or in Hilchot Gerushin, because those halachot are said to Jews. Right? The reason we have to know Theoretically, we have to know the halachot that apply to B'nai Noach, is when we have sovereignty, so we have to know how to be Dan B'nai Noach. So we, we're, we're Dan uh, B'nai Noach that live in our midst, uh, theoretically, right, according to Shiva Mitzvot B'nai Noach. So that's why we have to know Shiva Mitzvot B'nai Noach, and that's in Hilchos Malachim. That's why the Rama puts it in Hilchos Malachim. So in Hilchos Malachim, he talks about what creates a Shit for Ben Noach and what creates Gerushin for a Ben Noach. So that if a Ben Noach does something, so that the courts should know what to do with him. Because the deen is not the same. Okay. So there's a legal reality. I'm not talking about historically, right? What God told Noah, right? That, that's not the point. The point is how we view earlier, as we clearly view, the view is that historically there was something before, there was something before Matan Torah, See, that, right? Which, it, that doesn't matter. I'm not talking about we're not historians here, right? We're just saying the view that they had of how the halakha came into being is that there were laws of personal relations prior to the Torah, right? And the Rambam thinks that that's relevant to understanding what is after the Torah, at least in doing a contradistinction, right? Before Matan Torah, it was de facto. After Matan Torah, for us, it's de jure. And for B'nai Noach, it remained de facto. The Gadol. Right? Okay. Um, right, so when we talked about uh, with regards to Kiddushin, so we saw there were certain areas where um, the laws of Kiddushin di- um, um, diverged from the laws of regular Kinyanim. We saw um, right, the sheet of the Ravid that you only need Mishpatet Na'im by Gitin be Kiddushin. Right? We saw the Shittot that you might need less dat. The woman needs less dat in Kiddushin because there's no hakna'a. That was the uh, Avni Miluim. Do you remember? Sound, sound familiar? Right. So uh, the Avni Miluim said that even though in Mech Humemker you the uh, Mocher needs dat, but in Kiddushin, right the woman does not require dat. Right? And that's why you have to have Afkeinu. In, in the Gemara of Abadra. I'm just, this is like, just reminding you, right? So there were things, because there's no Kenya, so there were there were areas where we saw that the Halakot of Kiddushin are Someone not exactly Kenya. What? Someone said Right, right, and or, either that or you need more, and that's why that's why you need a Dutlakuma Davar, and that's why, um, that could be why you need Amira, and in Kenya, you don't need Amira, but in Kiddushin, you do need Amira, it could be because you need to create actually a higher level of Dat. But in, in any case, whether it turns out you need a higher level of dot or a lower level of dot. The fact that it's not the same as kinyanim indicates that we're not talking about kinyanim. We're talking about something else. Okay. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the Ushali. Thanks. Okay. First, the Ushali by. Um, Kiddushin, and then we'll see the Yushalmi by, by Gerushin. Okay, Yushalmi here is the third source on page one. Halama Hare Lamadnu, Shaishanik Ne, the Shalosh Drachim, O Bekesef, O Bishtar, O Bibia, Ad Kidon Bi Israel. This is all talking about Israel. Binochrim, Rabbi Avau Bishem, Rabbi Lazaktiv, Hincha. Okay? So this, these are, this is the format on Torah, so that's Sarah, Al bulot hein chayavim, ve'enan chayavim al ha'arusot. There's a different girsa here. There's a girsa that says, al ha'nesuot hein chayavim, ve'enan chayavim al ha'arusot. And that's significant. 
Let's just stick with what we have here, but we'll see the different here. So, okay. There's no such thing as erusin for Ben Noach. There's no kiddushin, in other words. Al okay? right? when there's physical relations between them, that creates the marital state. Milta de Rebeleza Amra. So Rebeleza says the language here is very significant. There has to be kavana of Shur Kenyan. So it's as if we're saying that a bat Yisrael is nicknate, bekesef bishtar bibiyah, a bat Noach, so to speak, is nicknate just bibiyah. Like the language of dato liknota. So this would belie what the Rambam says. Remember the Rambam says the whole, the whole issue of a Kinyan was only mitchadesh in Matan Torah. According to, the, according to Rabbi Elazar, there is a Kinyan by B'nai Noach. Just the question is, what Kinyanim were mitchadesh by Yisrael? So by Yisrael you have Kesef and Shtar also. By B'nai Noach you only have Bia. That I think Where is so. Bulat Baal. Kel al ha-bulot hein chayavim ve'enan chayavim ala avusot. Okay? Milta de Rebeleza Amra v'hu shinit kavein v'knota. Right? Through the Bia. Milta de Shmuel Amra Afilu lo mit kavein l'knota. This is practically pretty wild. That means if the if um, a Ben Noah couple have relations, even if he didn't have kavana l'knota, she becomes an eshet ish in hechot bnei Noah. Da Amar Rabbi Yona b'shem Shmuel. Right. This is how we know that Shmuel holds this. Right. Shmuel didn't say this explicitly, but we know he said. As he said, zona omedet b'chalom. Uvau aleha shnaim, Harishon eno neherag, Vasheni neherag al yadav. Vechinit kavena rishon le knota. Okay? So the, the zona becomes an eshet ish to the beer of the first one. And um, the second one is chayav for bilat eshet ish. Okay? Uh, forget about the difficulty of just this as law, right? But what it indicates is that um, Ishut by B'nai Noach is not created through a Kenyan. Okay? Let's take a look at the Korban Haida. I mean, okay. It's so problematic, but it's quite obvious that people aren't interested in right, right, right. together. Right. It's just right. It's just a factual thing. Okay? V'hi bulat ba'al. Havalei l'meimar v'hi eshet ish. Ela l'lam, that's the Korban Haida. L'lam dach l'ameid d'bibilahi Niknate. Okay. Right. Nisuot as opposed to Bu'ulot. Nisuot is still some sort of legal status, not just a description of what happened. So the Bi'ila creates a Kinyan. It goes back to our discussion about Chupa, where the Chupa is a Kinyan. We talk about by us, right? So the Chupa is a Kinyan, or Chupa is just the, um, basically the finishing the process which began with the Kinyan, but the Chup itself is not a Kinyan. Okay? So here he's looking at, nisu, at Nisuot as Nisuin as a Kinyan. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> um, so in terms of what happens by B'nai Noach, so the Ramam says that by B'nai Noach there's no Kinyan, and it seems that's Machloket in the Yushalmi. Okay? Now just because you say that there's no Kinyan, it doesn't force you necessarily to accept what Shmuel said, right? Shmuel says that if they have relations once and then they don't need that, so even, even though there's no dot, the whole zot, she's Mekudesh. She's, sorry, she's an Eshet Ish, right? Um, you can accept the basic assumption that it's not a Kinyan, but you don't have to go this far, right? You can say, um, for example, um, let's take a look in the Rambam in Chot Malachim. I'm jumping a little bit. But, I don't hold, hold on one second. Hold on. Um, in Chot Malachim, where the Rambam talks about um, how is Shifcha, it's actually a Gemara in Sanhedrin, the truth is. Let's take a look at quick Gemara in Sanhedrin, on page, top page two. Ki Amar Avdimi Amar Abilaz Amar Abichanina. Ben Noach, she yechayed shivcha la'avdo, uba'aleha, neheragaleha. Right, you have an adon, 
who gives a shifcha to his evet. So he has a he has a he has a, a a female slave and he has a male slave. So he gives one to the other. That is the prerogative of the adon. Okay, and he himself then has a relationship with the with the female slave. Neherag aleha. She's considered an eshadish. Okay. Me'e matai, from what point does she become um, an eshet ish? Amrav Nachman mi de karaula rebita de planya. From the time they say, oh, she's so and so's girl. Right? When it becomes public, mm-hmm. publicly accepted. Okay? Me'e matai hatarata, when does she become muteret? And the assumption is she can become muteret. Amrav huna mi shepararu shabashuk. Right? When she. When she walks around, she doesn't look like an she doesn't get dressed up like an Asian Ish anymore. Okay, so here. And we, that applies even to non-Jews. What? Even this is Jews. only non-Jews. This is a discussion only of non-Jews. Okay. Um, so from here, <coughs> we talk about this is uh, this also seems not a legal or a um, there's no legal ritual that creates the Ishut. When is she an Asian Ish? When they say, oh, when, when it's recognized publicly that she's with him, right? They're together, right? When people look at them, they say they're together, that's when she's an Eshetish. And when it's clear that they're not together, that's when she stops being an Eshetish. So the description here is um, de facto, right? Even though it's not a king, right? So it's, it's okay, you know, so you don't have to accept Shmuel all the way, okay? But Shmuel clearly holds that it's not a king, yeah? And Rabbi Lazar holds it isn't a king, yeah? I don't understand what they're yeah. trying to that's what I was trying to get yeah, yeah, yeah. before. I don't get what's, what's, what's the meaning. All right, so let, let's see. Okay, let's see the... Um, I mean, we'll see what the ramifications are. There's a hierarchy that one person does to another as opposed to to right, so, right, but no, but it has to do with the nature of the garish and what there's a possibility for garish. We'll see. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I understand the question. Okay. Um, so that's with regards to Ishut of a Ben Noach. Okay? Whether Ishut is created by a Kinyan or just created by de facto. And, um, all right, so that's a machlok in the Rambam and a different deal to the Yushan. So this okay? impediment yeah. implies that it's de facto, not. Yes, yes, okay. But it's different, but, but a shifcha is different. So we'll, we'll get to that, okay? Uh, yeah. To the Rambam, you're saying it's not, there's no Kinyan. By, by right. You said it's machlok to the Rambam and Yushan. One day in the Yushalmi, right? So it's a machlok in the Yushalmi, and the Rambam is of the opinion that it's not a king. Okay? Um, let's take a look what happens in, with regards to Gerushim. Okay? With the, the next Yushalmi. Hare Lamadnu Goyim Ein Lahem Kiddushin. See that? It's the Yushalmi, the bottom of the first page. Okay? Goyim Ein Lahem Kiddushin. Ma'u shi'ehe lahem gerushin. Okay. Rab Yehud ben Pazi, the Rab Chanin b'shem Rab Chuna Ruba, the Tzikorin. Oh, what did he say? Oh, she'ein lahem gerushin. Oh, she'shnehem megarshim ze et ze. Okay. All right. So what does it mean, ein lahem gerushin? All right. Shemegarshim ze et ze, that we understand, right? It sounds like, it's de facto. Anybody can get up and leave. Okay? It's not um, one is megaresh the other. Megashim zedze. That actually is a gun. If you jump to the Rambam in Hilchot Malachim. <coughs> Hold on one second. That's what zedze means. Oh, you want to say they both have to agree? No, zedze. I thought you used your high zedze. They agree. We're leaving. The Rambam was like. Either he decides, Either he he decides or, or, she decides. or she decides. But that's an that's, interpretation that's, of Zedze. You're right, I hear you. That's different though. than coming to mutual yeah. mutual agreement. Right, okay. But the Ramam ha- the Ramam has that basically. He says, um, if you look at the bottom of Halachachet, Perakhtet Halachachet in Chok Malachim, Mei Matai Tia Eshet Chaviro Ki Grusha Shelanu, Mi Shiyotzi Eno Mi Beito Vi Yishal Chena La'atzma, Oh, mishetetze hi mitachat rishuto v'telechla. She'ein lahem gerushim b'chtav. Ve'ein adavar talui bo b'levad. Ela kozman she'yertzehu ohi lefrosh zemizeh porshim. 
Right, I know, I know. Right, okay, Rachel. Rachel, okay. Okay, so, um, I read this and I said Rachel's going to say something. No, but I, mean, okay, I think we all have to say something. Fine. Okay, I think you speak for all of us. Okay. Um, let's continue to Rishon. What does it mean when it says, Ein lahem gerushin kla? Right? So take a look. If you look at the Korban Ha'edah, that's really surprising perush on that. O she'ein lahem gerushin bichtav el ba'amirah ba'al masadya. That's not what I thought when I saw the Yushalmi, right? Mm. When I saw the Yushalmi, I thought that there's that this is the Catholic Church, right? Mm. So he says, "Osha ein lahem gerushin klal means ein lahem gerushin bichtav ela ba'amira ba'al masagia." Osha shnehem migrashim zezeh shiur mitzehu. Oh he, right? The Korban is by influenced by the Rambam, mm -hmm. right? You say, "Oh who? Oh he lefros zemizeh porshin." Okay. What? How is that Ein Lahem Gerushim? That it's not, there's no... Because there's when no we think about tekes, Jewish Gerushim... What? It's not a tekes, it's just that they're right. leaving, it's not a... Right. No well, or Amira, no, Ein Lahem Gerushim Klal, is when we think, if you're living in the Halacha, when you think of Gerushim, you think of a Ketiva, a Netina, a Get. So we say Ein Lahem Gerushim means Ein Lahem Gitin. Right? That, that, that's how they're interpreting, that's how he's interpreting it. Ein Lahem Gitin. Right? What? Well, they don't have Gitin, it means that they're... That, it could be Baal Pet. Okay? Wait a second, then what, the way he interprets it, what's the difference between the two? The, the, the Elam Gerush and Elam Bami Rabba Al Masagya, that it's not enough. First of all, I'm not sure if it's no, the, it, you still, you don't know if it has to be the man, or it could be the man or the woman, but, yeah. it, it but it's more, but that. it's not de facto. They have, there has to be some sort of formal pronouncement. Right? It's not sufficient that one said, they say, you know, I've had enough, goodbye, right? But there has to be something said. Right? Either Hayat Mugureshet, Hayat Mushulachat, or whatever she might, she, whatever like she might have to say. What? Sort of like a tarik in, in Islam. Yeah. So, um, but there's still a formal action which is taking place. As opposed to the second possibility, Oshe Shnei Megashim Zed Zeh, is that either one can get up and, and leave, and that dissolves the marriage. In other words, when they're together, <coughs> they're married. And when they're not together, they're not married. That's what, that's de facto. Why isn't okay. the shot of Shnei Megar seems that it's, uh, there's full formal get, and it just can come from either side? And like, uh, without looking at the Korban Um And then the Machloket is what they have. The um, then the that. Machloket is who has to say it. It could be. It's very hard to know what Elam Gerushin means. Right. Okay. We'll see from the from the continuation. Okay. Well, what did what did Ein Lahem Kedusha mean when we said Harei Lamando Kedusha? That there's no significance to the act of Kedusha. Well, so right. Wouldn't the, that be the parable meaning there's no significance? It could. Well, that would indicate. We'll see. There is a possibility that there's no Gerushin at all. Right. That that, that means it's impossible to be Megarish. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. Um, Rabbi Yochanan de Tziporin... Could this be a disagreement with the... Uh, <coughs> Bavli, that the... Uh, the oh, we'll talk about that, Bavli, because this Shifcha is different. Okay, let's see. Um, Rabbi Yochanan de Tziporin, Rabbi Achar, Bichini, B'Shem, Rabbi Shmuel, Bar Nachmani, Ki Sanei Shalach. Um, continue the Rishalmi. God hates the person who is Megaresh. Ad et Hashem Eloke Yisrael, be Yisrael Natati Gerushin, the law Natati Gerushin be Umot Haolam. That sounds like the Catholic Church. Okay, and we'll see the explanation. There's no din of Gerushin be Umot Haolam. They can be married, but they can't get divorced. That's what it sounds like. Rabbi Chanina b'Shem Rabbi Pinchas, Kol Aparashak Tiv Hashem Tzvaot, Zekan Tiv Eloke Yisrael, Lulandach. Shelo yichei, listen to this. Lo yichei the Kadosh Baruch Hu at Shemo begerushin ela be Yisrael bilvad. Okay. Milted Rabbi Chia Rabba Amra goyim ein lahem gerushin. Okay. Detani, let's see. Rabbi Chia ben Rabbi Chia. Detani Rabbi Chia ben goy shegirish et ishto vahalcha v'niseit la'acher 
וגרשה, אוקיי? ואחר כך נתגיירו שניהם. So the question is whether you have this issue to take back the grusha, right, if a man is Megarish's his wife, right? and then she marries someone else, and then the, then the second marriage is dissolved, either by get or the second husband dies. So that's the, that's the issue that we have in the Pasuk here, that, that Ba'ala Rishon can't take her back, isn't right? This, isn't right? this right on the topic of Gersh, Nikai, Kat, and Shinola? Like it's All right, so some people connect it to this, but from really the context here, Gersh, Nikai, Kat, Gersh and Gerek and Tinoch and Ola, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily erase the legal history. That's interesting, right? <laughs> really? Look what it says, right? Entire Rebbe Chia, but he won't say Elam Gerushin. That right? that's the that's the presumably that's the Shacharotaria explaining the brightas on Tanya Rebbe Chia. Well, it seems it seems like a it weird read like of the Gemara. Based. It sounds like it's not based on Gershon and Gershon and Tinoch and Ola. Let's see. Ba'chav and Yisait Lachem v'Gersha ba'chav and Yitgayru Shneihem. אין אני קורא עליה לא יוכל בעלה ראשון אשר שלחה לשוב לקחתה. Because there's no גרושין. Right? So what it sounds like is there's no הלכה of גרושין. Because the, 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 the גרושין that the Pasuk is talking about is the גרושין through כתב. Right? And the גרושין that happened here was not through כתב. It was not גרושין in דיני ישראל. So that's what Elam Gerushin doesn't have a halacha of Gerushin, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no mitziut of Gerushin. Okay? But from the previous um, statement, right, the Shem Rabbi Pinchas, it sounds like there's no possibility of Gerushin at all. Okay? I don't really understand how you see that. Yeah, I think the similarity no, because of this Gemara is that there's no adultery. But, I mean, I know it doesn't agree with the, with the first Gemara. But the, the first year, there we go. Yeah. But, the, but this seems that there's no kiddushi, there's no gerushi. You're together, you're together. You, you want to be part, the next day you go sleep with somebody else. There's no, there's no dean of uh, being, weird, has yeah. someone owning your sex. Yeah. A man owning a woman's sex. Uh, no, this is a continuation. No, this is a continuation. This is not a different Yerushami. It's like five lines later, exactly. The, uh, the assumption is that the Hebrew lat ba, right, the question is, how do you define Eshet Ish? How do you create the status? How do you dissolve the status? Is it dissolvable, right? From here, when it says, Sounds like that the halacha of Gerushin altogether is, exists only for Yisrael and not for Bnei Noach. Let's see. But that's what the word Gerushin means. I understand. So we'll see. This is my cloak here. Well, if okay. You can't, if you can't divorce, then how can she go and she marry someone else and she was... But that's a different opinion. That's a, that's a Bnei Noach. Okay. And everyone word. agrees that there isn't Kedushin. Right. There is Nisuin, but there's no Kedushin. There's no significance to a, a legal action of Kenyan for Ben Noach. For Ben Noach, gives a pruta to a woman and says, or for whatever he says, there's nothing. It's not significant at all. Why okay? would you have a havamina that you, can't, that you can't divorce? That you can't? Oh, so yeah. we'll talk about that. Let's just see it first, okay? I mean, right now I'm just reading yeah. Yushami. We haven't, it sounds like that from the Yushami, but let's see. Um, let's see the, carb, the carbon aid on the Yushami, okay? Um, in the continuation he says, the Chola Parasha. See that? It's on the top of page two. Okay, he says, I'm sorry, Shelo Viter, I'm sorry, the third line. Shelo Viter, Kadosh Ruchot Shemo Begerushin. Klomar. Shehazivugim Mehashem. Kedichtiv Elokim Moshiv Yechidim Baita. Ein Raui Shelo Yikuyam Laolam. What God has brought together, let no one tear asunder, right? <laughs> so the, the Zivugim are um, Minashamayim. So it's the Catholic Church, right? Mamash. Right? The Zivugim are Minashamayim. Once you're joined, there's no way of dissolving the relationship, right? Ach bi Yisrael viter shmo v'kvodo. Right? So somehow the Gerushin is some sort of chil Hashem. Right. No, Hold on, Gerushin is some sort of Chil Hashem. Hashem. What? I don't, I don't get how the Zivugim of Goyim are... We just described all they're getting together is to be these random happenings. They're not random. They're Ratzahu Ohi. That's not random, right? 
but it's not it's not through a legal it's not but it's not a, it's not it, whether it is or it's not a legal a legal um, action or de facto it's not random right there's still ishut right so he says that once you have ishut this opinion holds that only in Israel can you dissolve the ishut that by by bnei noach there is no possibility at all to um, to dissolve the ishut okay. And among Rishonim, we have this opinion. We take a look. Now let's look at the Gemara and Sanhedrin that we quoted before, but look at it. We want to look at it a little differently. Okay? We have the story about a Ben Noach, she chet shivchala avdo uva aleha, ne'erag aleha, me'ei matai, midekarula rabita de planya. From the time that they say this is so and so's girl. Okay? Me'ei matai hatarata, amaravuna mi shepara. Rosha Bashuk. Okay? When she no longer behaves as an, as an Asian dish. And it, there's a public aspect to this, right? When people relate to her this way, right? the public aspect of being married, right? People relate to her this way, then she's, she's married. And when the reality changes and society recognizes the change in the reality, so now her status has changed. But okay? society's not, you mean, because she is the one that's doing it, right? Right, but when it becomes known, in other words, it takes. It's sort of measured by society. The same way, like in Sefer Rut, you have the whole story with Boaz and Rut in front of Ziknei Ha'ir, right? He's Mikabet Ziknei Ha'ir. So you have this, and Eidut L'Kiyum right? There's something public about being married, okay? Um, but it's, it sounds like she's making she's a public statement rather than public awareness. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. You know, I'm no longer Maybe. married, I no longer cover my hair, and you know. She's the only actor. There's no one else that has to consent in any way. Right, right. It seems no, there's no need for consent. No, it doesn't seem that way. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at the Iran, and more importantly, Rabbeinu David. Okay? Um the Karole Rabita de Planya. See that? This is the Kudushi Iran. Perush. Aval Bia Achat Eina Osauta Eshet Ish. Kidaavda Libne Noah. So this situation is different than the regular Ben Noah case. Right? The Hubu Lag Baal. They understand, he's, he's, he's remembering the Yerushalmi, that one bi'ah will make her an Asian to Ish, right? Whether you need the dot, you don't need the dot, that is makhluk the Yerushalmi. But you don't need this thing about when people know about it, okay? So here it's different. L'fi she'en bi'ata l'shem ishut. Because she's been forced into it, because it's uh, l'shem avdut. Because it's the Adon using his um, authority over her, Okay? So therefore you need, in lieu of her consent, because she's a slave and the, and the Torah recognizes the property rights, okay? the property rights of the slave owner is legal, right? so the slave owner can give the, the shivcha to the evet, but she doesn't necessarily agree, so therefore you need something instead of her agreement, if she agreed, if the thing was generally done under a consensual circumstance. So then there's ishut through the bi'ah, but a shivcha is different, because it's not l'shem ishut, it's, it's, under the context, it's in the context of avdut. So therefore she only becomes an ishut ish when they're actually together. Okay? So it sounds like that there are these two different tracks almost, even in B'nai Noach, if B.O. we don't know how to analyze it, right? Whether B.I. is a Kinyan by B'nai Noach, or B.I. is also de facto, right? So you have but one maslul, one track, for the normal cases of B'nai Noach who are free people, is Bia. For Avadim, it's not Bia, but general public acceptance and knowledge of the situation, of seeing them as together, right? You could say the two maslulim, the two tracks are, one is a track of a kinyan, and one is a track of de facto, and then you have something which is analogous to what you have by us, what you have by Israel. That's why it's important. By Israel, you can say that you have one track, right? We, we do both together, right? We have one track is the kiddushin, and the other track is the nisuin. So here, you, the, those two tracks are broken up. You don't need both, but it's either or. Either it's bi'a, or it's some sort of de facto uh, public recognition. Okay. And, and still not when you say kinyan and bi'a kiddushin, that, that is your word for say ritualistic. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's see. 
Um, okay. Ulefichach tzucha yichud gamur shetikare al shmo, because you don't have bia. Okay. V'chein hadam rinu me matai hataratami shepara rosha bashuk. Nir'ek kamochein shu dafka b'shivcha shachar shechmiru chokach b'yichuda. Since the <coughs> the Torah Chazal or Machmir that they didn't rely on Bia, they said that it has to be Bashetach, right? It has to be something de facto. Kach ein hetera ele priyat rosha bashuk, because it's not sufficient that they just separate. They have to. It has to be acknowledged publicly. Okay. Aval benoach acher kevan shepireish mi mena l'shem gerushim. Okay? So he holds the Ram, he, he goes like the Rambam, that Gerushin for Bnei Noach, the normal case of Gerushin Bnei Noach, is de facto. Either one, they can get up and leave. L'shem Gerushin. And then they're divorced. Okay? Now look at this. Hold on. No. No, the Adon is not a Jew. No, 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 no. But it has to do with the way with the with the norms of society. Right? Aval Haravar Ben David Zal is a Talmud of the Ramban. Okay? Katav Bikitushav. Shekarovu Shenomar. Shibne Noach ain lo heter le olam be gerushin. Right? Here you have it explicitly. You could understand the Yushami this way. Yeah, I could quote quotes the Yushami. But Bne Noach ain lam heter le olam be gerushin. Kamo shamar. Right? Amar lo he Israel lo yicheda kadosh baruch hu shmo al gerushin el a Israel. Aval be shivcha zo shalon aset eshet ish be bia kishar bne Noach. Ela be koach he yichud she yiched lo be zo. But yiched lo. Bezo amru shahutra bipriyat rosh, rosha bashuk. Shea yichud, shea asra, matira ha priut. Okay? So he says that there are two types of yichud by Menoch. Right? And here he's tying together the two questions. How is the yichud created and what its um, content is? Yichud that's created through bi'ah is not dissolvable for Ben Noach. It's concrete, reinforced concrete. Okay? So there, in, in that case, that Ishut is not dissolvable. There's no Gerushin. There's another Ishut for Ben Noach that's created in the context of Dut, where you don't, apparently the, the Chisaron is that you don't have consent. So it's only the Adon has the authority to force the, both, both parties. So Ishut is created there de facto, and then it can be unraveled, de facto. Because if the, um, and th I think this is the key to understanding it, Let, let's just step back for a second. Why um, should there be no Gerushin for a ben -no, right? I'm not talking about what they said, that Yichud HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shmo, just from a legal perspective, why should there be no Gerushin for a ben -no? If you say that the um, that a ben noach um, is kone, right? so I think actually I'm about to say the opposite of Rabbeinu David, but it it's still working with those categories. Okay, let's do, let's start with Rabbeinu David. Rabbeinu David thinks that. As I said, that there are two different levels of of ishut. Okay? The ishut that's created de facto, there's a way of undoing it. When you have, when you're working in de facto, so that's what de facto is. If they're together, they're together. If they're not together, they're not together. If the ishut is created through a ritual act of a kinyan, then or you need some sort of kinyan to undo it. Avamal right? asot, he would say. That the, the Torah was never bechadish. That you know, just because there's gerush in the katav la seifu kritut v'natan biyada, that's talking to Jews. The Torah is not talking to non-Jews. You don't have a parasha in a sense. There's no parasha of gerush. I'm looking at it very. You know, there are all these questions. The, the Minchas Chinuch loves asking these type of questions. 
we know, for example, that B'nai Noah can't eat Eivim Minachai, right? Okay. And we also can't eat Eivim Minachai, okay? If you have a piece of Eivim Minachai that falls into your cholent, right? Go back to last year. So you will say it's Batal B'shishim, it's Batal Barov, right? But what if a guy is making cholent and a piece of Eivim Minachai falls into his cholent? So does he have Bittal Barov? Does he have Bittal B'shishim? So, like, like the, we don't know, because he doesn't have Yoridea. So it could be that for a guy, there's no bitto. Right? Or maybe there's some other rules, which we don't know. Like, when does a guy become Chayva Mitzvot? In his Sheva Mitzvot? As Bar Mitzvah? Right? And, and a Bat Mitzvah? Where, and when does that happen? Right? How old do they have to be? Right? So the, it was all the, sort of, the meta halachot that apply to us, that govern where our halachot apply, which you a priori would have to ask by B'nai Noach also, in their machalot asarot, what's their thing? Are kalim asar for them? Right? If somebody cooks Eivim and Achai in a kli, right, and it's a ben yomo, so can the guy eat from it or not? I don't know. Right? The Torah wasn't given to Goyim, so the Yoridea was given to us, so we have to we decide for us. What's the story by Goyim? You really have no idea. There's no data at all. So that's, that's where you get people like Menchus Chino, it's very helpful. So he, like, he slugs that out. Is there the of Kezai Spechios Pras by Menchus Hosurus for a guy? I don't know. Right? So, the, so, in a, so here you have a status which is created because it says in the Torah, Vehibu Ulat Baal, but there's no parsha of Gerushin in the Torah for a guy. So it's actually very simple. Why is there no Gerushin for a guy? Because chipasnu v'lo matzanu, right? Yaganu v'lo matzanu, right? We looked for a, for a garish and for a guy, it just simply doesn't exist. Right? Why do you it, hagar? What do you mean? The pasuk was so random. Right? So the, the, there's no halakha. What? I mean, that's a weird pasuk to even find that that means there's a mix with kedushin. What? It doesn't matter. Rachel. That doesn't matter. We're, like, we're dealing with accepting the facts, and now we're trying to understand but that. I don't actually even understand how they learned that there was kedushin. Not kiddushin, he shoot. In cham meit ala eisha shalakach, shalakach, la vidu la ba, right? So he's chayv misa. So what you have, if you're dealing with de facto, so then you have a svara. How does he shoot? How is he shoot created? By them being together. So okay, so then it follows, and then when you don't need, then you don't need a parsh in the Torah. Then it follows if they're not together, then they're not married anymore. But if you're looking at it ritualistically, that there is a ritual that creates the marriage, but there's no ritual, but then you have to look for a ritual to undo it, and you don't have it. That's what Rabbeinu Dami so says. What's the source of the diure creation from marriage? What? What would be the source of the diure creation of marriage from they know? The Hebrew language. Yesh lem nesuah. What? She's Jewish. No, what? I'm not talking about Sarah. No, it's full matan Torah. The Gemara teaches to treat it full matan Torah. Yeah, then the, the, the okay. Mitzvah. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's a different mesh. Okay. Um, okay. So what we have here is three different possibilities. Okay. And understand what the story of Gerushin by Ben Noach. Either there is no Gerushin by Ben Noach, okay. or there is Gerushin by Ben Noach, and it's a legal. Geushin, or it's a legal action, that would be amira instead of tiva. But their halachot are different than our halachot. Right? Right? By us, any shamit garesh ela bichtav, she yiktov la lishma, vitain la, etc. By b'nei noach, they don't need ktav, they need something else. The amira is enough. Okay? But b'cholzot it's geushin. And the third possibility is that there's geushin de facto, the same way there's, there's nisuin de facto. Okay? But this, of course, depends on how you understand Nisuin, right, by B'nai Noach. If it's legal, so then you would need something legal to undo it, right? If it's de facto, well, it's all legal, right? If it's created by a Maase Kinyan, you would need a Maase Kinyan to undo it. If it's created by de facto Mitziut Bashetach, right, empirical way of life, so then when that dissolves, it dissolves. So those are the three possibilities of understanding what happens by B'nai Noah. Now, if we take, and this is now the key to understanding, now let's move to Gerushin by Yisrael. Okay? What is the, I, I, I'm, I was talking about 
two different ways of looking at the Gerushin where, by B'nai Noach, if you have it. If you don't have it, there's nothing to talk about, right? But if there is Gerushin by B'nai Noach, one way of explaining it is that there's some sort of Maaseh Kinyan, not Amira, not Ktiva, but Amira, right? So that's some sort of, look, there is Eud Verim Aniknim Ba Amira. There's some that in the world of Kinyanim, Amira works sometimes also when there's a great deal of Da'at, okay? So some sort of ritualistic act which is analogous to Kinyan, or I said something else, right? So what is that something else when you talk about Gerushin? So the key here... That's the third option that you said? Yeah, yeah, right? Well, uh, there are only two options if you talk about Gerushin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, one, the first option is there is no Gerushin. There's nothing to talk about, right? So this goes back, actually, you should read the Pesukim carefully, and to Alacha, which is, um, which is derived from the Pesukim, okay? So it says... Um, both times, right? It says in Pasuk Aleph, "Vayam lo tzachein beinav ki matzav ervat davar v'katav la sefer ki tuv v'natan biyada v'shilcha mi beito." Sends her away, right? Then it's "Viyatza mi beito v'halcha b'ital liishacher usnei aisha acharon v'katav la sefer ki tuv v'natan biyada v'shilcha mi beito." So v'shilcha mi beito. Is, uh, it's, it's obviously central to the Gerushin, right? So it could be when we talk about something being de facto, we're talking about Shilchami Beito. So when now I want to know, it's so when I talk about Gerushin, our Gerushin, right? When, when Yisrael does Gerushin Bechtav, what is that? Is that like a Kinyan Shtar? Which sound, it sounds like from the Gemara and Kiddushin, from the Mishnah, the Kona et Atzma, the Get of Mitat Abal, the Kona et Atzma. It's not so simple, let's leave that aside for a second. Okay? So, and from the Gemara and Kiddushin, it says, how do we know that uh, Shtar is Kona by Kiddushin? It says, V'yatsa v'hayta, there's a Gzera Shavat to Gerushin. Right? Shtar Motzi, so a Shtar Machnis. Right? So since there's a Get, which is a Shtar, that's the way the one talks about it. So therefore, shtar is kone. So you have a shtar by kiddushin, which is a kinyan shtar, and you have a shtar gerushin, which is also a kinyan shtar. It just it's just kinyan shtar in the other direction. Okay. So one way of looking at it is to look at it as a shtar. The get. The get as a shtar. It's very significant that the Rambam and the Torah, for that matter, never talks about. Well, the word shtar doesn't appear in the Torah, but. Um, what could you have in Yirmiyo? What is it called when they write Shtarot in, in Yirmiyo? Um, <coughs> on the bet. Is it called Sefer? It's called a Sefer, yeah. right? In Yirmiyo, it's called a Sefer. And they learned Dinesh Shtarot from there. So, what is a Sefer Kritut? It's the Rambam already lo- knows the Lashon of Shtarot, but when he describes it in the beginning of the Gerish, and he doesn't use the language of Shtar, he says, Ad Shigaresh Bichtav, right? I don't know necessarily if that's a star. Right? We'll see that there are so many different ways of um, different ways of looking at it. Let's talk about the Konat Atzma Beget. Is that right? the second answer? What? You, you said there were two things about what Get is. One of them is some kind of Kenyan star. Right, and the other is that it's Shiluchin. Right, and that would mean that basically the Gerushin that Yisrael has is similar conceptually to the Gerushin that B'nai Noach have. Right? If B'nai Noach had it, but practically it's executed differently. Okay? But what exists by B'nai Noach, let's say at least according to the Rambam, okay, that because basically everything is de facto by B'nai Noach, the Kiddush, the Nisun is de facto according to the Rambam, and the Gerushin is de facto according to the Rambam. But that could be the way Gerushin is for us. That Ktivat Sefer Kritut is the way the man is Mishaleach the Ishami Beito. But fundamentally, it's Shibuchin with Ktav. Okay? And it's not the Ktav itself which does the Gerushin. The Ktav is the way that we do the Shiluchin. Okay? So let's, one thing at a time. 
So let's look at the Lashon of the Mishnah. You could say, look, the, the Mishnah is against what I'm saying. The Mishnah says, V'konat atzma beget uvamitat abal. Right? So it says, V'konat atzma beget. So it sounds like the get is a shtar. It's a kinyan shtar. Okay? Um, but, if you, but from the next two words of the Mishnah, you see it's not so simple. Uvamitat abal. You wouldn't say, certainly at first glance, right, that he konat atzma b'mitat haba. Right? It's like Yerusha. Right, what you would say, what? It's like Yerusha. Why not? Really? No, I mean, there, we do have a Kenyan through death, right? That's the best way to think of it. Okay, I didn't think of that. <laughs> I would think that the, the simplest way of explaining the way a woman <coughs> whose husband dies, the way she becomes muteret is because her husband is dead, right? And you can't be married to a dead person, right? Except if you're like the, the Margaret Thatcher movie, you know, too, right? <laughs> so she still is married to women, right? But, um, um, so, but, but for, for most people, right? You, you, can't, you can't be married to someone when they're not alive anymore, right? Um, that would be the simplest explanation, right? Um, so that would so clearly there the heter of the eshet ish, the heter of the eshet ish is de facto. They were married and now he died. So the fact is that she's not married anymore. Right? So the fact that it says v'konat atzma beget uveli tatabal, it means that the lashon of the mishnah starts with kiddushin and says be gimel drachim ishaniknei be gimel drachim. And so they talk about the konat atzma, but they don't mean it literally, right? From the, right? Well, maybe they do with regards to gittin, they don't really, not with regards to mitat abal, okay? With regards to mitat abal, I, put you, I gave some sources here. If you notice, I put it in a smaller font and um, in, in um, brackets on page three. You see that? Yeah. Did anybody get to see it? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, last, this is definitely was last priority, but the most fun, okay? Because these are famous pieces, actually. The Kovic Urim is, I think, maybe the most famous, Rebel Khan Vasama, right? The question was, very halakhal so whether Ishto Shel Eliyahu is muteret, right? Because he's not here, she's not, right? But he didn't die, right? So what is she? She's in Aguna? What is this? Whether Ishto Shel Eliyahu muteret. Right? It's on page three. Okay? So, on page three. In the smaller fonts, right? Which one? All three talk about it. Okay? Um, the Chumas Adeshin is the earliest one that talks about it. Eshet Eliyahuza. O Eshet Reuben Levi. Im Yecholim Li Nasei L'Ishacher. Nafke, and what's the Nafke mean? Now, the Dorot Gamke. Im Yizke Acher. Kamoheng. That's the Nafkami. Maybe somebody else will go up with Shamayim. Uh, also, there's some story that he went up with Shamayim. Okay? So, and it, so if sometimes somebody goes to Shamayim and they didn't die, what would the halacha be? This is what's bothering in terms of Desha. Okay? Um, so he, um, he says, actually, I wanted the clearest presentation of this is actually in the Atvin Do'a right, in the first source. Um, this is a Polish Achron from the 19th century. It's very good. Did anybody, did any of you hear of it? Atvin Doraita? It's very recommended. It's a thin little book. You could call it the book of Yeshiva Shechakiris. Right? Right? There's like 28 chapters. He has like these basic questions that he asks, and he, then he slugs it out. Like, is Nida an Erva or not? Is the Isra Yuvam Ish or not? Is, um, I don't remember. He, he talks, it, it's like these like basic questions. So he talks about here about the name. What? Uh, what's the guy, uh, what's his name? Um, Rabbi Yosef Engel. Rabbi Yosef? Engel. Okay. Um, okay. He says, Da, Ki eich l'efshar l'hakshot, Ki eich l'efshar l'omar, De isur yivama l'ashuk, Hu mitpaat shenishar adayin ishut habal b'mikzat. He's talking about the isur yivama l'ashuk, right? Woman, is married, her husband dies, uh, and they don't have children, so she needs Yibo, right? So there's one way of understanding the Isra Yivam Alashuk 
is that the ishut of the dead husband was not dissolved entirely, quote unquote, entirely, um, by his death because there's a brother who survives him, right? 